Get over here! Now I know I'm comparing one live action movie to two animated films, and maybe that's not fair, but I'm going to anyway. Be forewarned, there's spoilers for all three films in this video. So yeah, let's go into this because all three movies came out around the same time. Scorpion's Revenge in 2020, and Battle of the Realms in MK2021 in 2021. But how do they stack up? It's the first time MK has been adapted to animation since that terrible Defenders of the Round cartoon in the 90s, and the first time a film has been made since Annihilation. Well, where are they similar, and where do they differ? Both MK2021 and Scorpion's Revenge open with Hanzo's family being brutally murdered by Sub-Zero, along with his own death. Though the 2021 movie has Hanzo as living in 1617, I guess they wanted to be more historically accurate, even though MK is not known for being so. Hanzo goes on a rampage and is very gory, more so in Scorpion's Revenge. Battle of the Realms and MK2021 have Raiden rescue a baby from a massacre. In Battle of the Realms, it is Liu Kang, but in MK2021, it is Hanzo's infant daughter from which Cole later descends from. Scorpion's Revenge did the exposition better for the Mortal Kombat tournament by actually showing you a montage of things, such as the Elder God, and you can actually see the one being in the background, or else MK2021 just has a clunky text scene. Couldn't have been that hard to do a montage. As for characters, let's start with Liu Kang. In Scorpion's Revenge, he is uniquely written as the underdog in his fights. In both Scorpion's Revenge and MK2021, his victory against Goro is stolen by another character, Cole Young in MK2021, and Scorpion in Scorpion's Revenge. In the case of the animated films, Raiden does mention that Liu Kang was never meant to defeat Goro, but to defeat Shao Kahn, which just raises questions, because if nobody killed Goro, then Urfram would have lost the tournament. I guess Raiden was just banking on Scorpion interfering. The reason Liu Kang loses in Scorpion's Revenge is so he can have an underdog story in the next film, as seen when he defeats Shao Kahn and becomes a god and defeats Shinnok, one being Fusion. That being said, he is the heart of the two films, which is what he should be, or else in MK2021, his role is taken by Cole for some reason. Johnny Cage is not in MK2021 aside from little tease. The reasons for which we won't go into here. In the two animated films, he fills his usual role as comic relief, and he gets hit in the nuts three times, even though that's his move. Don't be such a baby! It's just a kick in the nuts! Yeah, because Sonya was the one who did it twice. Easy for you to say! You don't have nuts! Seems to work here. <laughs> Jax in both films loses his arms. Degoro in Scorpion's Revenge, and Sub-Zero in MK2021, even though he majorly undersells his injury in MK2021. You just wait till it grows back. Although he does get the return to favor to Kentaro in Battle of the Realms, Jax doesn't really have much of a character arc in either adaptation. He does have some arc about developing his metal arms. It's funny how in the Midway days, Jax's arms were augments he wore over his original arms, but now they're just replacements in the Warner Brothers days. Sonya is more of a hard-ass in the Scorpion's Revenge film, while well, in MK2021, she's just kind of bland. Doesn't even have her arcana, which is so stupid, they never explain that stupid thing anyway. She still has her rivalry with Kano in both films, and it's played up a thing, but overall she's just there. Kano dies in both films, in both cases by getting his eye crushed. Although I know he would probably get his trademark eye armor in the sequel, I will say that it's pretty funny, if dumb, that he gets his eye power by getting angry over not getting an egg roll. Best character in MK2021, which isn't saying a whole lot. Raiden is very enjoyable in the animated films. In fact, he's superior to his MK1 to MK11 counterpart. He's wise and gives good advice. Battle of the Realms takes a bit from his MK3 story where he gives up his immortality to compete. Or else in MK2021, he's just a huge jerk who talks down to the fighters. This is what I have to work with. Yeah, I guess I'd be disappointed too. Katana is... Not in MK2021, aside from tease of her fans. Her role in the animated films could be better. It's not as insultingly bad as MK9, but definitely could have been a lot better. Feels like they didn't have proper time to flesh out her story. Meanwhile, Molina is in MK2021. She has no characterization, and she basically just gets killed by Sonya. With Katana, they mentioned that her story could be its own movie, which goes to show just how Katana has yet to be done proper justice in adaptations. Melina has never been done justice as far as I can recall. Although I suppose the Mortal Kombat Legacy web series comes pretty close. Kung Lao in both adaptations serves his role as the friend of Liu Kang who dies, which serves to piss him off and motivate him. He's about to get his soul sucked. God, that line is so dumb. I know people think this started with MK9, but it really goes all the way back to MK3. 
First, and I think the biggest problem both adaptations have is that they don't give Liu Kang and Kung Lao a scene together that shows they are as close as brothers. We're just told they're like brothers to each other. Reptile shows up in both and is promptly killed off. At least I think this is Reptile. Reiko is a generic goon who was killed off in both movies. Or at least looks like he was killed in Battle of the Realms. Cabal and Lee may serve the same purpose. Lots of characters with their own histories are just generic jobbers, unfortunately. But let's get to the main focus, Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Like I said, both movies open with Hanzo's family being slaughtered, and Scorpion enacts revenge on Bihan, the first Sub-Zero, but really was Quan Chi in disguise. In Scorpion's Revenge. It's ironic, really. In Scorpion's Revenge, Bihan is completely innocent, while in MK2021, Bihan is completely guilty. And he's still alive, despite this taking place hundreds of years later. Scorpion is portrayed well for what it's worth, a decent guy who realizes that revenge has not made him feel any better. I'm happy he kills Quan Chi early so that we can be done with him. Then the sequel sort of adapts the MK2 story where Scorpion feels guilty for killing Bihan by making a partnership with Kwai Yang. It's a sickness that eats at your soul until you become a monster of regret and pain. Yep, it's true. I do like how Sub-Zero and Smoke find out about the Cyberlin Clay. That's almost exactly how I envisioned it in MK3. Gotta admit, that was cool. So Scorpion is a highlight in both adaptations. Sub-Zero is... Well, he's okay in both. He has an arc that makes sense in Battle of the Rounds where he realizes that revenge isn't the way to go and makes peace with Scorpion. Here's what really doesn't work about MK2021. Cole Young. He takes Johnny Cage's place as the audience surrogate. He takes Liu Kang's place as the chosen one. And he's descended from Scorpion. Most of the focus is on him when really nobody cares about him. At least the anime film did focus on Liu Kang for the Battle of the Realm story. Although the final battle is Shinnok merged with the one being. And after they beat him, where the hell is there to go from there? There is nowhere to go. You can't top that. Really wrote yourselves into a corner here. Things like this make me think MK is better adapted as a TV show. Yeah, give me a TV show with the first three seasons covering MK 1, 2, and 3. That'd be awesome. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit that bell, like, and subscribe button. If you want updates, follow me on Twitter or join my Discord, which are provided in the description below. See you next time.